Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Welcome to Eagle Bend Community Church. And now our announcements. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you all this morning. You know, um, just to give you a little history here, uh, our car, there's this little thing that was put above the, 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 uh, the rear view mirror. So I'm driving, I'm going, what, what is that? And he said, well, that's from State Farm. And it tells you if you're driving correctly, if you're not driving correctly, and it takes about $60 off of your, your insurance, your car insurance. And I said, well, what does it actually do? He said, well, you know when you come up to a stop sign and you don't turn your blinker on and you turn anyway, or when you come to a rolling stop, or when you uh, make a quick turn, or you, or you quickly speed away from the stop sign that you've stopped to? And I looked at him and I said, oh, all those things that I do? <laughs> so I've never been so conscientious in that car. I mean, I, I start to go through a rolling stop and I stop. It's like, how do they know that I was coming up to a rolling stop? <laughs> So, well, well, we have uh, some uh, birthdays today, and one is Tom Raglan's birthday is the 23rd, and Ann Oakley's is going to be the 28th. So let's sing happy birthday to these two. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, October babies. Happy birthday to you. All right, great. We yes, we hope. <laughs> I know that's you know. Um, we have. <laughs> I am not going to say what I was going to say. We have no Bible study on Monday because we have a board meeting, and we uh, have no choir Tuesday because Calvin's away, and so is um, uh, Phil. So Tuesday we have a day off. And um, ladies' luncheon, please sign up for that. That is always so much fun just to get away. And it gives me a break once a year that I don't have to cook. So, or actually twice in December. And that's the other thing, too. Our December party is so amazing. It is just so wonderful. So I will have a sign-up sheet next month ready to go for that one. So uh, please sign up for that. We do a, a gift exchange. And, um, and it, that's always a lot of fun. Right, Ellen? Yeah. So, all right. Yes. <laughs> Please sign up for the men's gathering. That is, uh, oh, you did cancel that? We live in the same house. It's called this. Wait a minute. What is that called? What is that called? Come on, you could do it. That's a good boy. <laughs> so, that would help. <laughs> The other great news is we are going to have three baptisms next Sunday. Isn't that amazing? I, I am like on cloud 55. I mean, I'm just so excited that we're going to have three. three um, one is Deb Towers and her nephew. And what's your nephew's name? Eric. Eric and Ann Terry. So if, if, you, if you think you have not ever been baptized... Or if you think you have been baptized but don't remember, you can still be baptized. <laughs> it would be perfectly okay. So I am so excited for the three of you. I really am. Anybody have anything they want to say other than Lois? Lois is coming up. And I think this mic needs to be turned up just a tad. Like I said, it's perfect. Okay, our shoebox pile of return boxes is growing slowly. Um, let's aim for 75. What do you think? I think we're up to 10. So, <laughs> 10 that have been turned in. We've handed out about 40 boxes. So, well, let's see where it goes. I just wanted to remind you, though, if you do fill a box online, which you can do at their website. It asks you their boy, girl, the age range, and it gives you choices of what you want to put in that box. It's $25. You do it sitting right there at your computer. Um, you can pay by e-check, PayPal, or credit card, and you will get an email, a receipt and an email that tells you where your box went. That little QR code on the labels also will get you an email where your box went. If you do fill one online, be sure to tell me, 
but then I forget. So, because today I even forgot I was going to bring a list. Next week I'll have a paper out there. If you fill a box online, be sure to tell me. I think, I think at least six people now have told me they've done boxes online, but there could be more. So, when you're thinking shoe boxes, remember to say alpaca shoe box. Okay. Okay. A copy of where to do it? No, when they when they sign up online. Oh, can yes. They forward that to you so that that way you'll have their name and all their Right, or just send me a message that I did a box online. Yeah. It, if you do it online, you you don't have to wait to sign a list. You can send me an email and say I filled boxes online and and I'll remember that because it's written down. There we go. Why don't we open the morning in prayer? Lord Jesus, we are grateful for your kindness, for your mercy towards us, which at some times it seems we try to wear it out, use it all up. And yet the source is eternal, so we're grateful. Thank you for loving us when we are unlovable and walking closely beside us. In Christ's name, amen. When I felt like the burden was more than I could hold When the whispers of worry overwhelmed my soul left me alone you were there all along you are faithful why should my heart be afraid you are faithful I know you're not gonna change I was down to the wire, hoping you'd come through. And you stepped in the fire like you always do. Now I'm convinced of your love. You are more than enough You are faithful Why should my heart be afraid? You are faithful I know you're not gonna change Whoa. My Father, how great, great is your faithfulness, oh God, my Father, how great, great is your faithfulness, you are faithful, why should my heart be afraid? You are faithful, I know you're not going to change. Aren't we grateful he doesn't change?
hail the power. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Okay, because I'm on guitar, I can do this. Is that too high for you? A little bit? No? A little bit. Gosh, you're difficult. Right in the middle of worship, you're difficult. <clears throat> Is this better? Let every... Mm. Is this like choir practice, worship practice? Because we're not in heaven yet, right? So I just want to, you know, it's that morning voice. Okay, so we'll, for those of you who want it lower, those of you who want it higher, we sing one of those. Those of you who want it lower, we'll do this one, okay? Let every tongue and every tribe on this celestial ball To Him all majesty ascribe and crown Him Lord of all To Him all majesty ascribe and crown Him Lord of all Oh that with yonder sacred throng We at his feet may fall We'll join the everlasting song And crown him Lord of all We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. I think, I think I know by now. <laughs> Let us join in a congregational prayer to the Lord. Father, in a world that seems to have gone crazy and lost its way, we come to you this morning not just seeking answers, but seeking strength and courage for the days ahead. We pray for courage to be the people who you have called us to be, people who seek justice and peace, through your love for all your people. We struggle with questions that seem to have no answers and problems that have insurmountable solutions. As we look and listen to people around the world, so many are divided and at war with one another through guns and killing. We know that you love us all and consider each one of us important and, and part of your creation. Help us to be more like your son who you sent to show us how to live and respect others. This morning, we lift those in our congregation who are sick or hurting in any way, and there are many. Give them strength and peace to face their situations. Give us courage to speak about our faith, to teach those around us about our love for all people, and to lead by example, showing and speaking with respect to others. All these we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay, today's scriptures reading is James 1, 2 through 8. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, 
who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. It's really hard without you standing, so you're just going to have to project. Thank you. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin And opened the life gate that all may go in Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the earth hear his voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the people rejoice Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he had done. I have a pause. Sorry, it's a one of those things. Got to get the words there. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes. That moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. So come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he's taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. So come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory the things he has done. And now for the doxology. We are supposed to stand. Thank you. I heard that. <clears throat> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Be seated. Let's pray for the offering. Lord, as Bruce has already prayed, the the status of our world, our nation, it looks dark. But you have not left the throne. You are not scared. You're not afraid. Your kingdom is forcefully advancing forward. So will you bless what is given today in an act of worship? for the advancing of that kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
How, how many of you know the song, There's Power in the Blood? Okay. As I sing this song, you're, you're going to echo back to me one word. And that word is power. So when I indicate this side, you'll say power. If I indicate this side, you'll say power. Okay? That's not hard. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here we go with there's power in the blood. competition here. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost, in its life-giving flow, there's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there's power, power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood Power in the blood Would you dip daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood last time oh there's power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb oh there's power power wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb in the precious blood of the Lamb. Ooh, ooh. Thank you, Betty, for leading that group. <laughs> well, we know 
who's competitive. No way. <laughs> we won. Jeez, oh, Pete, Betty. We won. Yeah. Let's pray. Jesus, would you do your work in us this morning? You've asked me to teach about the absolute key to faithfulness. Some of these verses are uncomfortable, but may we agree with you that they are good and that you've called us to them. It's in the name of Christ I pray. Amen. So most of you, just by hearing it, have probably memorized James 1, 2, and 3. Consider it pure joy, my brother, speaking of Christians, when you face trials of many kinds, testing, difficulties. Do you avoid that verse? When you hear, be joyful in difficulty, what goes through your mind? Huh? Okay, Bruce, very honest on the front row, said, yeah, right. <laughs> Someone else. Really? Someone else. What, what do you, when, when the Lord says, have joy in difficult circumstances, what do you, how do you react? Go. Who's that tennis player that was a young man? John McEnroe. McEnroe. <laughs> or Betty singing the song. <laughs> You cannot be serious. Okay, so let's, we'll just talk for a moment. This is brutal. This is hard. Why would he do that? Why would the Lord inspire James to write such a thing? And let me start off by this. As Hebrews 12 tells us, Jesus, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross, endured the cross, persevered on the cross. So first, he's not asking us to do anything he has not done. Now, we might think in our minds, well, but he was the God-man. He was fully God, fully man. If he was fully man, did the nails hurt? Just like they would hurt you. Just because he was divine didn't take the human pain away from what he felt. In addition, taking on the weight of the sin of the world is a spiritual burden. That's why he can say, come to me if you're tired. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. I will give you rest. Rest from what? Well, the Jewish community and the religious people of that day, man, they were working hard. I grew up in a church that was come to Jesus, then burn out for Jesus. True story. And they, we didn't have classes on it. You just caught it from the sermons and from Sunday school and from hanging out with the people. Burn out for Jesus. I don't think that's what he means either. But is this possible? It is possible. But we've got to grow. By the way, I'm going to, I'm going to say this. Um, don't look around when I say this. I'm going to invite you, whether on your phone or whether the actual hard copy, I'm going to invite you to start bringing your Bibles more and more because I want you to make notes. Is it because I think I'm all that? No. But the Lord wants us to remember some things. And, and if you're like me, like, okay, in my hard copy Bible, that is on the right side, about halfway down the page in James, you know. So become familiar with it. Because if this is the last time you think about it, then we're failing. Especially this sermon, okay? So consider it pure joy, Christians, when you face difficulties and trials and testings of many kind, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Today's sermon title is the absolute key to faithfulness, and that is the word, perseverance. Because in the end times, in the last times, many will say it's too hard. I don't want that to happen to you. 
Many will say, well, they're threatening my life. So I don't want that to happen. Many will say, why would God ask me to do this? He already died. Why do I have to die? It's just too hard. People are making fun of me. It could come to the day when um, we struggle to get food because we are Christians. Has it happened before? Yeah, it has. Now, am I trying to scare you? No, I'm trying to prepare you. But we have to persevere to the end. Otherwise, we might be wasting our time. If our faith cannot endure difficulties, that's one level. But doing it joyfully? I heard somebody say this recently, based upon what's going on. Because there's an organization that said, um, it is with great sadness that we report that our HR person for our company happened to be at a music festival, and we lost her. And she's 25. It's not okay. The pastor John Piper would say it like this. There are certain religions that kill to expand their religion. Christians actually die in love to expand theirs. Started with Jesus. Followed by the disciples and many martyrs. Because they thought it was worth it. Question, is it worth it? Would it be worth it to lay down your life here representing Jesus knowing that you'll be with him forever. Our faith grows in testing. It is like going to the weight room and putting a little more weight on each day and a little more weight on each day. Now, the challenge is, well, I didn't choose that. I didn't choose that hard circumstance. Well, Jesus gives us an opportunity to do that. Wait, what do you mean? Jesus gives us an opportunity to put ourselves in growth-type situations. And every time I mention this, you roll your eyes. <laughs> Praying, fasting, giving. Put yourself in those situations with regularity so you can become stronger. It's like going to the weight room and lifting. Now, if you just go in and, and, and don't grab any weight and just do this, it's probably not gonna help. A little weight will help a little. A little more will help a little more. It's equivalent to what James is saying. Our faith grows in testing. Can it grow in worship in the midst of testing? We talked about Job a couple of weeks ago. Loses his entire business, wealth, and family, except for his ill-spirited wife. I won't even comment on that. In an afternoon. And what is his first act. He humbles himself, he puts on sackcloth and ashes to show humility, and then he worships the Lord. See, we pass over that because God said, he's the one who picked the fight with Satan to say, have you considered this guy? I know what he's made of through and through, and it doesn't matter. And so when difficulty came, Job worship. You're like, well, he wasn't joyful. I get it. He was in pain. But Jesus somehow, who for the joy set before him, persevered on the cross. What we're talking about is a gritty, long-term steadfastness of trusting the Lord. So we'll look at how to get this. Because in verse 4, he says, perseverance must finish its work for two reasons. One, you can become mature, and two, you can become complete. It's, it's a proving ground. You're, you're proving that you're mature and you're proving that you're complete in Christ. It's a character word. So how do we do this? First, Hebrews 5, verse 11. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you're slow to learn. This is, him. This is not me talking to you. This is the writer of Hebrews talking to us. And we have to see which shoe fits. In fact, though, by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Now, I hope if you've been 
coming here for any amount of time, either here or in Bible study, that you're moving on to solid food, that you're learning to feed yourself, that all of your spiritual nourishment is not based upon what's happening right now. Because if it is, we need to talk. We've got to be learning to feed ourselves in, in the scriptures. Anyone, live, anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. You don't know how to live. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Constant use. Question. Does your faith permeate every area of your life? The way we drive? Especially when that little thing is measuring you? <laughs> The way we talk to people when the line is long, the thoughts that go through our mind, the way when maybe we didn't sleep well last night that we interact with other people, does our faith permeate, permeate those areas with what we do with our time and our resources? His point is you ought to be discipling. That is the Great Commission. But you're still consuming your babies. We have to ask ourselves, am I a baby? Or am I growing in maturity? How to be mature? Constant use. Constant use. Constant use. Later in Hebrews 6, he says this. Hebrews 6, 1. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings. So he's saying, hey, let's move on. The elementary teachings about Christ, let's go on to maturity. Let's not spend time laying again talking about repentance, of acts that lead to death, and of faith in God. Those should be commonplace because you're thinking about those things every day. You're walking in it. This is, this is how you live your life. Um, about instructions about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. His point is, we're, we're trying to grow you. Now, is there anybody here that's a chiropractor? Okay. I, I've never been to one. Lord willing, I will never go to one. I, I'm sure they're nice people. I have all of my friends go, oh, I need alignment, whatever. Well, just go do some squats and squat rack. You'll be fine. That'll align your back perfectly. It'll crack it and all kinds of stuff. My perception, which I've been told is incorrect, but that once you start getting alignment, you got to keep going and going and going. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to have to keep going back. Can you just fix it and move on? Yeah, if you'll be healthy and whatever. That's just my perception, a bad illustration. The writer of Hebrews' point is, can we move on? Can we, grow, can we all just grow up? How many times do you watch the news and go, can we not just all grow up? You walk away from a conversation. Can they just not grow up? <laughs> And then sometimes we say to ourselves, I had this conversation with the Lord this week. Can I not just grow up? Look at me. Look at my attitude. Can I not just grow up? So how do we do this? The absolute key to faithfulness is perseverance. So how do we persevere when it's difficult? We'll be real specific. It involves all of us. Before we go there, James 1, 5 says this. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given. And then he goes on to the idea about don't doubt, be like the person who's thrown back and forth by the waves. Or I want wisdom today, I don't tomorrow. Pretty fickle. Wisdom will prevent your perseverance from being about the wrong things. Wisdom will prevent your perseverance from being about the wrong things. You can say, well, I haven't missed Bridge Club in 34 years. So what? Maybe it's a great community that you can be a part of, then that's awesome. It's like when I was little, we used to get to every morning in Sunday school, we used to get to lick the star. There were green and red and blue and silver and then the ugly gold. And we would get to put the star on because we were there. Now, hopefully, while we were there, we were learning. 
But you could be there and not learn. You can sit in here every week and not move on to maturity. So wisdom prevents our perseverance from being about the wrong thing. So how do we do this? First, we need community uh, that involves each of us. We need each other. Galatians 6, 9 would say this, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And what is the doing good? All through Paul's epistles, it's about serving one another, serving others. A great relationship is someone that looks out for the needs of, of Merla, and Merla looks out for my needs, and, and man, that was very kind of you. And then somewhere along the way, not transactionally, not out of guilt, but I see that she needed something, and I'm like, hey, let me help you with that. Oh my gosh, thank you. Is that the type of community we're creating here? I hope so. By the way, would you like to see some of your friends and neighbors attend Heritage Eagle Bend Community Church? Why don't you serve them? Do you only take cookies at Christmas or birthday time? Or Halloween? How about a random day in mid-October? Hey, I was just thinking about you. And if the cookies are good, they'll think it was a nice thought. And if the bad cookies, you know. Galatians 6, 2, carry each other's burdens and in this way, fulfill the law of Christ. We need each other. Spur one another on to love and good deeds. How does this work with God? We've talked about this before, but sometimes, well, Janie has been kind to send me numerous texts. I, I'm, I'm we're not, we're not worshiping Janie. I'm just saying thank you in front of all of you. After my son stood up here and spoke, and, and then I've updated you on some of the things going on with him, my middle son, she will, at, from time to time, say, I just want you to know I'm pray, I prayed. I'm praying and I prayed for your son. That means the world to me. How does that work? Because God puts it in your head. Puts it in your heart. Puts it in your spirit. Hey, Reach out to someone. Fred today came up and said this to me, and I said, this is very nice. He said, would you like a chair to play from when you're up there? Yeah, none of the rest of you thought of that. <laughs> but why does he do it? Because he, he sees, he's perceptive, he, he deals with the sound equipment, and he sees what's going on. And I was like, wow, that's very kind. That's proactive. It takes courage I called a buddy of mine one time. Hey, where are you? I'm in the Nashville airport. What are you doing? About to fly to Indian, India with Compassion International, my son. Are you okay? This is getting weird. Why? <laughs> Lord just put you on my heart. I had to check it out. Oh, so we had a good conversation. What does that communicate, even if there's not a specific God was thinking about you all the way across the other side of the, the nation. All the way across the other side of the world. That's our God. He wants a family who serves one another and doesn't walk away and go, eh, 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 eh. no, we serve with kindness. If we're gonna persevere, if we're gonna do it with joy, if we're gonna become mature, we need each other. Point one. Second is this. We have to get a perspective. We have to get God's perspective. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Sounds like one of the Greek philosophers from Psalm 116. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us us with Jesus and pre present us with you in his presence. He's writing a letter to the believers. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. It's a mutual thing. It builds upon the first point, but it's a perspective because why am I persevering? For God's glory first. Jesus, who for the joy set before him. See, that's a weird way to write it. Why well, didn't say for the cross set before him? 
Isn't that the point? No. The joy set before him, he endured the cross. Joy's the main subject there. What was the joy of Jesus on the cross? That he was pleasing the Father. And he didn't care what it cost him. Question to us. Am I willing to sacrifice to honor the Father? Or is most of my life about glorifying myself? Paul would write it like this, therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly, and we could just talk about this for hours, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. Ah, that's the constant use. See, it's not just on Sunday that we read our Bibles. It's not just on Sunday we think about God or pray or whatever. For the maturing, for the persevering, it's every day. So the litmus test, does that match up with you? Have you heard of the 40% rule? Apparently it's quite popular among the Navy SEALs. That when you're ready to give up and think you have reached the end, you're at 40%. Now that's why they're Navy SEALs and we're not. First, But they said, by the time your brain, your body feels like I am done, you got 60% more. We just don't like to push ourselves. And it's true. We don't. Why? We like to drift towards comfort. And it's killing us in our nation. Paul would write this in 2 Corinthians 4.13. I'm sorry, 417 and following. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. That's the perspective. It doesn't matter what you're facing. Yeah, but you don't know my life. God knows your life. And he's still calling us to this. Achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. It's a better glory than you can buy or find here on the earth. So we fix our eyes not on what we can see, but on what we can't see. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. You have spiritual eyes. Paul prayed in Ephesians that they would be open and you would grasp how high, how wide, how deep is the love of Christ. Jesus would ask this question. Do you have ears to hear? Do you have eyes to see? Spiritually. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That unseen world is more real than what you can see. Why? Because it lasts forever and this will go. Whether when we close our eyes or when Jesus comes back, it's gone. And the unseen, the angels, eternity, heaven, the Lord, is forever. And we have an eternal part of us. Do you see the deception that's going on in our world? I mean, this is marketing at its best. You need this now. It will make you look like this, feel like this, whatever. Smell like this. The Lord is saying, that's its place. We don't want you to stink. But it doesn't last. If you could invent a cologne that you never had to put on again, Pretty impressive. Sometimes we need it twice a day. Huh? But he's saying, this is temporary. But what we cannot see, the parts of us, the parts of creation, those are eternal. So here's the challenge with our perspective. Can you change your appetite for what satisfies Can we change our appetite for what satisfies? I mean, I could give you a lot of illustrations about addictions to sugar and things like that. Oh yeah, I'm good at those. Here's Jesus explaining a parable. Others like seed sown on rocky places. Ah, the parable of the sower. We're throwing out some seed. Others sown like seed on rocky places. They hear the word and they get excited about it. They receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they have no constant use, 
They have no perseverance. They have no deepening. That lasts only a short time. Literally, he says, when trouble or persecution comes, they fall away. And you go, well, what's the use in it? Throwing that seed out anyway. It didn't last. How many of you in the past six months has had to replace an appliance and said, boy, they don't make them like they used to? I went to a, a guy's cabin up in the mountains. It's funny because I'm 5'6", and I had to duck to go through all the thresholds because it was built quite some time ago. But they have one of those 1940 refrigerators that still works. And the good thing is, if, if they're not up there for a week or so and the power goes off, it keeps it clean. Because the, doors, the front door's this thick. The thing's this wide. And they literally don't make them like they used to. Sowing a seed that doesn't last. Do you and I, can we persevere? He says when trouble or persecution come. That's the constant use. Then he goes on with this, Jesus. Still others, like seeds sown among the thorns, they hear the word. Uh, but they're not gonna be fruitful, and here's why. Three reasons. Too worried about this life. Too worried about this life. They're not looking at eternal glory. They're looking at my life now because they have arranged their life that this is what matters, not that. This matters. Oh my gosh, if this doesn't happen, I'm gonna die. No, you're not. No, you're not. Second one, the deceitfulness of wealth. Merging, drifting towards comfort towards comfort. And I'm speaking to a retired group. Not quite retired, I know. Me either. Is your focus, yeah, I'll show up at church, but other than that, I'm going to do what I want. I'm retired. I've earned it. That is not a kingdom perspective. That may get me never preaching here again. I understand, but that is not a kingdom perspective. There's no retirement in the kingdom. You know what I'd say? Hey, you got more time. Who are you influencing? What are you learning? Who are you praying for? Who are you serving? Who are you talking to? Yeah, but I'm not a pastor. I don't know. Two cups of coffee. How are you? Step one. How am I? Oh, here's how I am. Worries of this life, deceitfulness of wealth. Third, the all-encompassing desire for other things. I just, I just want a lot of other things other than I want to be faithful and persevere in the Lord. There's just a lot of things I want to do. Really, for a life that's going to go like that? I mean, you may not make it to the end of the day. And you're putting all your eggs in that basket. And he's saying, I got a different basket for you. But it actually doesn't matter about wins and losses here because it's forever. This is the great deception in our world that we should focus all of our time on energy, all of our time and energy on this life. But if you're going to persevere, if you're going to do it with joy, if you're going to grow to the point of maturity with joy, you've got to look at a different world. You've got to get the Lord's perspective. Only then can we consider it pure joy. To close, why would we consider it pure joy? How do we get there? Jesus was about pleasing the Father even though it cost him the cross. How? Because he knew a little something we didn't. He knew about a little something called resurrection. He knew a little something about the Father's plan. Abraham, when he was asked to sacrifice the son, the son who would give great promise, to all the nations. We find out in Hebrews that he had reason that even if I kill him, God's, God can do something. He's gonna bring him back. I don't know how. I don't know how that works. Life, blood, molecules, whatever. I don't know. 
But I don't need to understand. I need to trust. I need to trust. So consider it pure joy, regardless of what you're facing. We need each other. I need your encouragement. I need your prayers. You need my encouragement. You need your prayers. By the way, I'll put this plug in. That's why I love our Monday night Bible studies. We can talk about this and then apply it to our lives and have a longer conversation. It's awesome. I feel bad that a lot of you miss it. But we talk about you. <laughs> Janie's laughing really hard because she talks about it. I'm kidding. And we need the Lord's perspective, an eternal one, not one focused on this life. This stuff doesn't last. You know that. Your tires, your brakes, your appliances, they don't last. Kingdom things last. Let's pray. Father, Help us not to be like the seed sown on rocky soil. Which can be exciting in the moment. It even says it's received with great joy. And then either it wears off by the parking lot or by the next challenge that comes. Teach us to have your perspective. We know it's a supernatural thing to have joy and perseverance. We know that. And the closer we are to you, the more it happens. You even say it's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit leading our lives. Lord, would you help each of us wrestle with this word today? We're not guaranteed another day. We can only work on this one and help us to have the perspective that you have. We love you. It's in the name of Christ I pray. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Prince of Glory died My richest gain I count but contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, 
Save in the death of Christ my Lord All the vain things that charm me most I sacrifice them to His blood So divine, demands my soul, my life, my own. So Father, we sing those words. All the vain things that charm us most, we sacrifice them to you. Help us to make good on that. Lord, today at this table of forgiveness and grace, acceptance, it's amazing to us that you know everything about us. All our actions that others may not see and you still love us. And we're grateful. Let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven.
is to bear. What a privilege to care. for you? Oh my gosh, you guys are difficult. Okay. Let's sing it with the perspective that we've talked about in the sermon, okay? Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble And a friend so faithful Who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer Are you weak and heavy laden with a load of care Precious Jesus still our refuge Take it to the Lord in prayer Do your friends despise forsake you Take it to the Lord in prayer Still take and cheer you. Thou will find a solace there. Our benediction is live each day as if it's your last with an eternal perspective. Be blessed. We're dismissed.